It was a typical Wednesday night, and I was settling into bed, exhausted from a long day of classes and studying. Just as I was drifting off to sleep, I heard a faint noise coming from the other side of the house. I sat up and listened, but the sound stopped. I assumed it was just my roommate getting up to go to the bathroom, so I laid back down and tried to fall asleep. I was asleep for a while when I was woken up abruptly by a loud thud, like someone dropped a large object. Startled, I looked around my room in the darkness and saw nothing. I turned on the lights, using a lamp on my nightstand, but did not see anything out of place in my room. I considered that I might have dreamt about the loud bang. I fell back asleep. When I had just entered my deep sleep for the second time, I heard something in the hallway again. It sounded like soft footsteps, slowly pacing back and forth across the hallway. I got up again and tried to see if I could see anything in the dark hallway, but it was too dark and I couldn't make out any shapes. I tried to ignore the noise and go back to sleep, but it was no use. I kept hearing the footsteps, which seemed to be getting louder and more frequent. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong with the situation. What's going on, I thought. The noise was louder than anything that should be happening at 2 o'clock at night when some people have to work the next day. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I got out of bed, turned the lights on in the hallway. Unfortunately, I found out what was making the noise. I saw my roommate pacing back and forth in the hallway. He looked like a maniac, pacing back and forth quickly over and over again. With the light on, he must have seen me but he didn't react to me. He was just staring forward with an angry look on his face. He was flush red. I tried to say something to him to break his trance, but it was no use. I was pleading with him to stop because I couldn't sleep. There was no response. He just kept pacing the hallway. When I tried to physically stop him from pacing, he knocked me down and kept walking. He was totally out of his mind. That was the last straw for me. I called campus security and they arrived in eight minutes. The officer saw him pacing and did not know what to do either. He did not respond to the request to stop and talk to the police. They pulled out their tasers and threatened him with the shock if he did not stop, but there was no reply. The officers reluctantly shot him with a taser, but it was no use. He was still walking, like the taser did absolutely nothing to him. I was so freaked out at this point, I had to step outside in the hallway to catch my breath. I heard a loud commotion and ran back in the room. There I saw my roommate was on the floor and the two officers were on top of him. He was thrashing around violently, like a maniac. They put him in handcuffs and put him in the back of a police car after multiple attempts of attempted escape from custody. It turns out my roommate had been at a party and was given a mysterious substance. He apparently went crazy at the party and was kicked out. He came back to the dorm and was thinking about how all the people at the party were terrible human beings and how he would get his revenge on them. With his mind altered, it allowed him to descend into madness and stay there for a long time. He also had a rough family upbringing as well that was probably causing him to have more of an emotional breakdown due to what he was on than normal people. I moved out and never saw that roommate again. Although I felt bad, I moved out and never saw that roommate again. I do feel guilty, but I did not feel safe in that situation. What could he have done to me in my sleep? Fortunately, I will never know. When you have a roommate, get to know them well, so there are not surprises down the road. If you don't know them, you don't know what they're capable of. I had always been a bit of a neat freak, so when I moved into my new apartment and saw that my roommate was a bit of a slop, I was a little worried. However, I decided to give him the benefit of the doubt and hope that he would clean up his act. But as days went by, My roommate's messiness seemed to only get worse. Clothes were strewn all over the floor, empty food containers were left out on the counter, and the bathroom was always a disaster. I tried to politely ask him to clean up after himself, 
but he just shrugged it off and said he didn't have time. Over time, the food containers were left on the floor, and there were spilled drinks that were never cleaned up. The carpet was getting sticky from spilled soda. It was everywhere. There was starting to be food that fell out of the containers onto the floor. It was disgusting, like an episode of Hoarders. I never thought in my life I would be living in an apartment that was this bad. Over time, it got worse and worse. I was starting to get more aggressive with my roommate to clean up, like this can't be how we live here. But he ignored my pleas and just kept ignoring the mess. Things took a turn for the bizarre when I started to notice the strange noises coming from my roommate's room at night. It sounded like he was talking to someone, but when I asked him about it, he denied it and claimed that he was just watching the TV. Who was he talking to? I began to feel uneasy around my roommate and decided to do some digging. I discovered that he had a criminal record for breaking and entering, and he had been evicted from his previous apartment for stealing from his roommates. I also talked to the landlord and told him about the roommate's behavior. I told her that I wanted to get out of the lease because the situation was way too bad. The landlord paused after I explained everything and asked me what the roommate's name and description was. I thought that was kind of a weird question. I answered her question. She asked me if I was in the apartment and if my roommate was there. I told her yes. She said, get out now. I'm calling the police. What? I quickly gathered my things and took it to the car. I was safely out of the house and called the landlord back. She finally answered the question I was wondering about. She told me that I didn't have a roommate. As I was on the phone with the landlord, I saw a man climbing up to my bedroom window. The police pulled up and saw the man climbing. They shined a big spotlight on him. Startled, he fell about two stories and landed on the ground. They secured him and came to talk to me. I explained the situation. They went up to the apartment with guns drawn. I remember hearing three distinct shots from my former apartment. One big blast that sounded like a shotgun, followed by two smaller shots that sounded like handguns. I saw an ambulance arrive and three more cop cars. It was a circus for sure. The roommate I thought I had was a squatter that decided to crash the place while my landlord was in between leases. I moved in thinking he was my roommate, but he was just there. He had a shotgun in his room the whole time and decided to try and use it on the police. I'm lucky it wasn't me. The landlord let me break the lease and gave me my deposit back. I appreciated that, but I was traumatized for life. I got another apartment, but a studio. I never got a roommate again. There was always something off about my new roommate, Emily. She was always so quiet and seemed to disappear for hours at a time. I never knew where she went or what she was doing. One night, I was lying in the bed trying to sleep when I heard a faint noise coming from Emily's room. It sounded like scratching, like someone was trying to claw their way out. I sat up in bed, my heart racing, and listened more closely. The scratching continued for a few more minutes before it stopped abruptly. I laid back down, trying to convince myself it was just a rat or something, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. The next day, I asked Emily if she had heard anything strange last night. She looked at me with a blank expression and said no, she hadn't heard anything. I couldn't shake the feeling that she was lying to me. As the weeks went on, the scratching noises continued. I started to dread going to bed at night, wondering what I would hear. One night, I couldn't take it anymore and decided to investigate. I tiptoed to Emily's room and slowly opened the door. Inside, I found Emily crouched in a corner, her nails long and sharpened to a point. She was scratching at the walls 
muttering to herself. Once I saw this, I backed away slowly, my heart racing. I knew I had to get out of there, but I didn't want to leave Emily behind. I tried to calm her down and persuade her to come with me, but she just stared at me blankly. I knew I couldn't stay there any longer. I gathered my things and left in the dead of night, never looking back. I never found out what happened to Emily, but I knew I never wanted to see her again. Hey, Spooky Sooner here. Um, just want to let you know what we got coming up. Uh, we got gas station stories, hiking stories, tender stories, and cabin in the woods stories. And I might try to do another American Haunted Places, Texas, uh, a re-recording of that one because I had a mic issue that I got fixed. Uh, let me know if you are interested in me telling a story for you. Uh, give me a subject and I can uh, create a story for you. Um, email me at SpookySooner7964 at gmail.com. Thanks for all the support. I'm up to 115 subscribers. I appreciate everybody listening. I just want everybody to know that I'm having a great time doing these stories and uh, and creating them. And it's all based on things that I've heard of uh, in the past. Um, you know, uh, whether it's stories uh, maybe from other creators or um, stories I've heard in newspapers or things like that. You know, just in my whole life kind of compiled into what you're getting here thanks for all the support and have a nice weekend and i'll see you next time stay spooky what i gathered my things and left in the in, 